The reason why God has singled you out in that family, the reason why you are able to see the type of a spirit that is governing into that family is because God wants you to pray over that. He didn't single you out for you to get out, get safe, and then don't do anything about it. Mm -mm. He has singled you out for you to be able to pray for them. Hello, my beautiful people. My name is Ifi Obi. If you are new to this channel, welcome to my channel. And if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back to my channel. I appreciate you, all of you, clicking into this video. For those of you that are new, I create faith-based content. If you like that type of content, please don't hesitate to subscribe to my channel. I would really, really appreciate it. So today's video, you already know by the title, I want to talk about forgiveness. The Lord was the one that really spoke to me about this. And as he was talking to me, he wanted also to share this to you guys because this is not only a me problem, it's a body of Christ problem, right? You know, forgive the ones that hurt us, forgive our enemies. So the Lord spoke to me about not only forgiving your enemies, but also to pray for them. And I know that this is kind of like it's more easy said than done, especially when the people that have hurt you, the people that are supposed to encourage you are the ones that are putting you down. The people that are supposed to build your confidence are the ones that are destroying your confidence, are the ones destroying your self-esteem. So I know that it's hard to pray for those people. In this video, when I talk about the enemies, I'm talking about people that are really close to you, like family members, a mother, a father, a toxic parent, um, a toxic aunt, I don't know, whatever it is, you know. But the Lord really explain to me why we have to pray for them. I have some notes so if you see me looking down it's because I'm looking down the notes but in Colossians 3 13 it says don't be angry with each other but forgive each other. If you feel someone has wronged you forgive them. Forgive others because the Lord forgave you. I feel like this stage of forgiving we understand that we need to forgive each other. It doesn't matter the gravity of the problem. We must forgive at all times. For me in my case right my relationship with my mother is still broken and you know she's still showing signs that she's not yet there in a stage where she can realize her wrongs before i used to think like man i don't think that she has a fix like she can be fixed but the lord began to explain to me why it's important to pray for those ones that have hurt you for those ones that have wronged you you think that you are okay and they are the ones that are not okay but the truth is that when you are praying for them the lord is doing something on you as well because there are some things that needs to be fixed inside you jesus when he was on earth he constantly prayed for us. He constantly prayed for the sinners so much so that when he was getting crucified by us, you know, by the Gentiles, by the non-believers, by the ones that didn't believe in him, Jesus said to God, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. This um, verse right here is very powerful because we understand that nobody does wrong on purpose. I know that it's hard to die yet because when you see someone doing wrong, when someone has hurt you, it looks and it seems that this thing, they're doing it on purpose, especially when you have been letting them know that, stop, I don't like when you do this. And they keep doing it, and they keep doing it, and they keep doing it. It's like, are they doing it on purpose? But the Lord let us know that, no, they don't know. They don't know. For you, in your mind, does not make sense because you will not hurt someone that, that you love, right? In your mind, that's what you, you are thinking. That's what you will think that, no, I will not do this in purpose. That's exactly what your enemies, the people that have hurt you, also think that they are not doing that on purpose. They don't even know that they are doing what they are doing. You know, the people that crucified Jesus, they thought that they were doing something good. That's the funny part, right? So now when you pray for your toxic parents, when you pray for anyone that has hurt you, someone that has been, that is close to you, I want you to pray for these two things that the Lord has showed me that we must pray. You have to pray for love, pray for the love of God to receive on your enemies and to reside on you. Love is what keeps the unity together. The enemy, Satan, the devil, despise that. He wants to keep families apart. That is something that the Lord began to show me. The reason why God has singled you out in that family, the reason why you are able to see the type of a spirit that is governing into that family is because God wants you to pray over that. He didn't single you out for you to get out, get safe, and then don't do anything about it. Mm -mm. He has singled you out for you to be able to pray for them. Mm -hmm. 
Funny enough, you know, I remember having a conversation with my cousin where I had a conversation like years ago about like how the women in our family from my mother's side, right? We have a very strong mouth, not in a good way, in a sense of like uh, we had that our mouth has keep women in our family in situations with men that are not the ideal not only with men but also with other things and she was talking about it and as she was talking about it i told her like yes yes like this is so true because i've seen that with my mother and i just knew in a young age that i don't want to use my mouth in that way you know what i mean uh, when we had a conversation and, and we never you know like at least for me never dawned on me on about praying against that because having a sharp mouth is not a badge of honor at all for me the way i took it is like okay this is bad i, I i'm gonna try not to do that um but funny enough <laughs> Uh, when I got married without knowing, I was very sharp with my mouth and, you know, having a alpha man, like my husband, if you don't know about Igbo men, most Igbo men are very alpha. So we clashed a lot. Thankfully <laughs> for me, I came to the conclusion that, okay, uh, something has to change. And I decided to, you know, come to God and ask and uh, help me to navigate. And the Lord changed me towards my husband. But I still have a lot of work to do when it comes to my family. When I say my family, uh, I'm talking about my mother. At least I'm aware of it. And I guess what I'm trying to say with this is that when you see something wrong, when you see a bad habit that runs in your family, you have to pray about it. You have to pray for it because if you don't pray for it without you knowing, you might end up doing the same thing. So it's important to pray for bad habits that runs in the family. Family is supposed to be united. Family is supposed to have the love of God because when you have the love of God, when every single member has the love of God, it's impossible for the enemy to come and attack. It's impossible for you to use your mouth to put somebody down, to put a, a family member down. It's impossible for you to gossip about the family member behind their backs. It's impossible for you to keep hatred uh, against um, a family member. It's impossible to keep grudges against a family member. When you have the love of God. It's not normal for a family to be apart. A family is supposed to be united. That is the reason why Jesus came to this earth, for us to be just one body. So your family is supposed to be one body. It's not normal for you to see the wrong that has been happening for generation to generation, where brothers and sisters not not getting along. And if God has singled you out, has put you in that, if God has put you in that family, it's not a mistake. He has put you for a reason. He has put you for you to pray for you to break generational course it's not for you to just escape and then go on your own uh, in my own case you know i have built my own family i have my husband i'm happily married i have my children i'm trying my best to be the best version the best mother i can be for my daughter i want to build a, a, a trust foundation between me and my daughter because I didn't have that. And it's good that, you know, I'm putting boundaries when it comes to my mother, but at the same time, it's also good to pray. Also, you have to pray for peace. Pray for peace of Christ to rule in your enemy's heart and in your heart. When you are praying for them, prayer it works as a double sword, okay? In a sense of that, it's not only a doing things to that person that you are praying for, but also is doing things to you. God will renew your heart as you are praying for them as well. In Colossians 3.12 says, Therefore, as God chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. In my case, right, my mother and my stepfather, they are pastors, right? So for me, I just couldn't further understand, my mind couldn't understand why these people that are pastors, they are not behaving like a children of God. Because when you're a pastor, I feel like you are in another 
you know, in another, <laughs> in another level, I see like you are more, you are more like Christ like. So it's like, why are they not showing compassion to me? Why are they not showing kindness, humility, gen uh, gentleness to me? They're supposed to show me what it's like to forgive the one who hurts you, you know, but instead they are not showing that. They are showing the opposite of that. So I didn't understand. And the Lord began to show me that, that the reason why they are not showing kindness, right? The, the reason why they are showing the contrary of that is because you know like all of us before we came to christ we weren't safe before we before we came to christ we were indulging ourselves in sin and the law began to show me that is because in my case my parents they haven't gotten rid of of the old self they have garments on them that it's ruling over them from the old self although they know christ just because you know christ does not mean that you have submitted yourself or yourself to god it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that. So that's what the Lord began to show me. And that's the reason why you have to pray about that spirit, that old spirit that is still going on into their lives. That spirit that is still going on into your mother, into your father, into your uncle, into your aunties. Like you have to pray for the love of God to capture them. Like imagine the story of Apostle Paul, right? Look at what he was doing before. He was killing Christians left and right, left and right. It's only when God captured him and transform his heart. He was able to do what he was able to do for the kingdom of God. You know what I mean? But if he wasn't transformed, if the love of God didn't capture his heart, he would still be doing what he was doing before. So that's the reason why you have to pray for your enemies. You have to pray for them because the truth is that they haven't yet experienced the love of God. And that's why they are doing what they are doing. They have to experience the love of God because when you experience the love of God, when the love of God is in your heart, my dear, there is no way that you're going to uh, keep grudges for years. There is no way that you are going to be angry at somebody for years. There's nothing that somebody will do to you that it will make you to be angry for years. There's nothing that someone will do to you that you will not able to forgive that person, especially when it comes to a family member. It is good to put boundaries. Trust me, it is good, especially when that person is showing signs that they're still not here. But also, I want you, as you are putting boundaries, you we must pray. I include myself. We must pray for those ones. We must pray for our enemies. We must pray for our enemies. We are called not only to forgive our enemies, but to also to pray for our enemies. In in my case, right, um, I haven't spoken to my mom for a while, I would say, um, because like I said, the relationship is not the best. Although I have forgiven my mother for the bottom of my heart, I have forgiven my mother, I have forgiven my stepfather, I have forgiven everybody that has, that have had a hand in my suffering, in my struggles. I forgive them totally. Like it is what it is, you know, just because I forgive them doesn't mean that the trust that I had, especially for my mother, has been broken. There's so many things that has happened that I don't trust my mother anymore. I have told her that before. I don't trust her. And also, so, you know, I want to say something because the Lord told me that any relationship that has been broken, if you have a relationship with your mother, a relationship with your mother, with your father, with your auntie, with someone that you really love, the Lord told me that Look, that relationship can be restored by God, only by God. Not a external person can be the mediator to restore that relationship. The Lord showed me that a mediator that is not Christ centered is always going to be biased. A good mediator of Christ is always going to be uh, for restoration. Like, what is it that we need to do, both parties, to get to an agreement to be united again? But what I've seen in my family is that the people that should be able or the people that could, let me say, the people that could have a hand to restore that relationship, they're going to be biased. So the Lord showed me that it's only God that can do that. It's only God that can restore because God is not biased. God, what he wants is to really restore their relationship. I mean, what is the good in having a family that is separated? It doesn't bring any good. And the Lord began to show me when a family is together, 
A lot of things, a lot of good things begin to happen. You know, when a family is together, is unite. So many blessings come to that family. So many blessings. Generational wealth. So many things that he begin to show me. So that's the reason why the enemy keeps, likes to have families broken because he wants that brokenness to continue going on. He wants that family to keep living in bondage. So since now you know better, you should do better. In my case, no one, no one is going to fix that relationship with God. And it's going to be through prayers. The reason why I haven't reached out to my mom, you know, is because I'm not ready. I'm not ready yet. And that's the honest truth. Uh, because like I said, that trust has been broken and I'm still allowing God to do what he needs to do. For as far as I know, my mom is still not ready because she has been talking to people and she's still keeping grudges. He's still spilling lies about me and about my husband. So for me, it's like, okay, I'm going to give her time and I'm still going to pray for, for, for both of us. I guess what I want to say is that it, the, the Lord is the only one that is going to uh, restore any broken relationship. Nobody else. And you should pray, not only forgive, but to also pray for them. Pray for love, pray for peace. So I hope this message finds you well. Please, as you listen to this message, I want you to also share this message with other people because this message needs to be heard by a lot of people. Yeah. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on my next one. Bye-bye.